Hello and welcome. Um, I'm checking out the Rock Store NAS. Um, up until now, I had only known about Free NAS, which runs on BSD, and Open Media Vault, which runs on Debian. Today, while I was getting some advice from the people in the um, home uh, lab subreddit, someone mentioned Rock Store. Rockstore um, is pretty, um, uh, it really speaks to me for two reasons. First of all, it's a CentOS system, and I'm very, very much into Red Hat. All of my systems are either uh, Fedora or CentOS, with only a few exceptions. Um, a couple of VMs where I'm just trying different things and my wife's computer which is Ubuntu from back when Fedora um, didn't really support easy upgrades from um, version to version and I just wanted something nice and simple and easy for my wife so um, I've been using um, ButterFS uh, for a long time on my main machine um, I really like it a lot. I love the snapshots and the fact that because it's a copy on write system, the snapshots don't take up any space until you change files, which means for the most part you can have tons of snapshots without wasting space unless you're doing something like downloading a lot of things or torrenting a lot of things that aren't staying on that drive. Um, so Rockstore uses ButterFS, which is the second reason that it really spoke to me. So it's on CentOS and it uses ButterFS. Now, what I would like to do, if I use this as a real um, NAS running on real hardware as opposed to VMs, would be to run uh, either RAID 5 or RAID 6. Um, this, um, this modification of CentOS is running Linux 4.4.5 kernel, as you can see up here in the top right-hand side. and. Um, while RAID 5 and 6 was unstable for a very, very long time, um, as of Linux 3.9, it's considered ready for use. Although there are a couple of things left to be done, such as some modifications they can make to it that would allow it to be more um, efficient in using hard drives of different sizes by, because of the way it does striping. And there's a couple other little things here and there um, that make it not 100% perfect. Now, um, Synology has um, recently moved in their latest operating system to using ButterFS, so that kind of shows that it's it's becoming more and more production ready. And I've been using it on my main computer for a long time without any issues. Um, uh, to be fair, Synology is not yet using ButterFS 5 and 6 over their SHR um, implementation of RAID, which basically provides what ButterFS would give them for free um, if they were ready to trust it. But um, I do have everything um, backed up to the cloud and crash plan and so um, I'm not too worried about it and when you use ButterFS raids um, starting with a mirror but going up um, as you continue to add more disks, you give it more metadata and more parity that allows it to correct for bit rot errors just as ZFS can. And since one of the things I'd like to store in here would be my photos, um, correcting for bit rot would be very, very important. So uh, what I wanted to do here is just a couple little tasks um, to learn for myself as well as um, document them for others. And so uh, I'd like to first create a RAID 6 pool. Now, um, Rockstar recommends uh, using five disks, but I'm going to create it with four, which is the minimum you need for RAID 6, um, so that I can then add another disk and see what happens. And after that, I'm going to add yet one more disk, uh, which will be of a different size to see how that affects things. Um, I should have added it before I rebooted, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, the system tends to reboot relatively quickly. So, 
let's start off by creating a raid six pool um, so if I go to storage and pools I'm gonna create a pool I'm gonna call this um, test raid six okay so I'm gonna go to a raid six here um, okay compression not gonna worry about compression mount options not gonna worry about that right I'm gonna add one two three four so ooh, for some reason it didn't take six there you go six okay so I'm adding four drives of one gigabyte each and I'm gonna have that's gonna give me two gigs because one alright so two of these are parity drives so two drives can fail before I have to worry so I'm gonna hit submit so now I have test rate 6 you can see the disks that are involved um, I find it interesting that they use these things rather than the UIDs because I think these designations can change on reboot but uh, I, I hope internally that Rockstore is using the UIDs rather than DBC and E. Alright, so if I go back to storage disks, I can see that these are part of test rate 6, which is pretty cool. Let's go back to the dashboard. Alright. Um, so, no disk activity. Alright, I have. Um, two pools. Um, one of them is the pool that is the the main disk for the system. All right. So you have 17 gigs of disk, 15 gigs of pool. All right. Almost no shares. That's okay. So now, oh, and the replication, the send and receive, is. Um, what I'm super excited about because it should mean that I can send backups from my main system way faster than doing an rsync or um, any other method that's typically used for backups. Alright, so now let's go back to um, storage. Uh, let's go to disks. No, let's go to pools. Alright, this one has an exclamation. Oh, that's because the regular one. Alright, cool. So here's my pool. I see that I have two gigs free. I've used none of that space. It tells me when I created it, and it's a RAID 6. These are all the disks involved. I can resize the pool, which. Uh, ah, okay, so I can add disks, which is what I want to do, but let me hold on for one second. So I can do a scrub, which is. Um, a roughly equivalent to a um, F disk, only it can it repairs the files on a in a different way on a different level. Um, think of it as the OSI model, but for disks and balances. Um, you should never have to balance; it should automatically balance when you add new stuff. Uh, all right, so I'm going to resize the pool. I'm going to add disks. I do not want to change that it's a RAID six. I mean, it's cool that it asked me. So I'm going to add this disk. So right now I have two gigs free. I'm adding another one gig disk. All right, resize. Okay. So the balance should be super fast because there's no data on here. Yep. So now when I come over here, I've got three gigs free. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. So now, uh, what I'm going to do is um, let's see so I might be able to add a disk without shutting down let's see if I can do it I'm gonna go to my machine man oh no sorry I'm gonna go to the device I'm gonna add hardware storage 
So here's my one that's two gigs instead of one gig. I'm going to choose that volume. I'm going to finish. Could not be attached to the. Cannot be hot plugged. Okay. Alright. So it looks like it'll be there uh, after next boot. Let's take a look and make sure if that is true. We will go to disks. It's not there. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to uh, reboot the system. Uh, which might mean that it's going to ask me to re-log in. We'll see. should be ready for me. Alright, looks like I didn't have to re-log in, which is good. Uh, though, you scan. Looks like maybe the disk didn't attach. Nope, it did not attach for some reason. Okay, that's fine. So I will shut it all the way off. Alright. Let's go in here. And, uh, oh, there it is. I guess it didn't work for a reboot. I had to go from scratch. Let's see now. So now I start it up. Um, I, this doesn't mean you can't hot plug with Rockstore on bare metal. This is just a limitation of um, KVM, and they did mention it in their KVM uh, in, in their KVM instructions. All right, let's see. So I go to disks, shares, disks, rescan. All right, I've got a new one. Okay, cool. So this one's not part of anything, and it's two gigs. All right, so let's go to the pools. So I have three. I'm going to add a two gig drive. Let's see if I end up with four or five. Resize the pool, add disks, next. Yep. And resize. Done. If I go to my balances, my balance is done. I go over here. Ah, I have 4.67 gigs, so it looks like there's some kind of slightly more complex math when you add disks of different sizes. Now, the good thing is that you can add disks of different sizes, um, because my plan would be to upgrade my system piecemeal, as opposed to having to do all the disks at once, which is the case with ZFS. So, in fact, <coughs> let's pretend that I was upgrading. So, I was adding in G uh, to remove uh, B, because uh, this drive uh, is smaller than what I need. I want to increase the capacity of this pool. Uh, and maybe this drive, I'll say, it can be well let's say it's been it's been five years right and the drive could be dying and so what I want to do is instead of waiting for it to die and then having to rebuild my pool which is going to take a long time um, let's say I want to get rid of it so I'm going to go to resize pool I'm going to say remove disks I'm going to take away B I'm going to say that B is the oldest one I'm going to take it away I'm going to resize finish. It's balancing. Okay. And now we have, oh, the balance is one, two, three, not done, but 
not sure what I have to do to reset the view because certainly it should be done by now. Um, so now you see that that one is gone and we have 3.6 gigs. So before we had three, now we have half a gig more by adding a two gig drive. So while we're not taking full advantage of the new size drive, we are able to do it piecemeal because then, you know, what I would do is, you know, a few months later when I had some spare cash, then I would replace um, SDC with a two gig drive, right? And we go increasing and increasing so that we end up with a bigger pool. Now you might be asking yourself, sure, you could do that, but why not just keep adding drives to the pool? And there are two reasons. Um, first of all, of course, as hard drives age, they're more likely to die or have errors. But the other thing is <clears throat> that the more hard drives you have in a pool and the pool's redundancy never increases, we always only have two drives that can die at once. The more drives you have, statistics dictate the more chances you have of more than two drives dying and then you lose your entire pool because the pool only works as long as only two discs or less have died so ideally what you would want to do is um, have a have a spare or more on hand but in addition to having spares on hand if you're cycling out your discs um, periodically and increasing the capacity then you're ensuring that you're going to have less of a chance of a failure. Now, there's the supposed bathtub thing, which is they're more likely to die in infancy and then in old age. But according to what I've read from um, Backblaze and other places, that's actually a bit of a fallacy. It doesn't actually um, follow a correct bathtub model, and drives can really fail at any time. So um, it remains to be seen. Um, you know, as I do some research, what would be the optimal size before I would want to um, not go any bigger and I would want to make a separate pool. And and, if, and let me explain a, for a moment why I want to do pools to begin with. Part of what I want to do in having a NAS is to be able to pool hard drives together so that I can um, make use of all the capacities of the drives um, as efficiently as possible so let me let me demonstrate I would within this pool let's see so I would create a share and this share would be photos it's going to go in test rate um, size I think they said um, doesn't actually matter um, I would I would leave this uh, like that. I would hit submit. Okay, that would create another share. This would be media. Uh, so I think they said on their website that this doesn't do anything. I'm not sure if they're uh, if that has changed. I'd have to check their latest um, information. But I hit submit from there. And I'll create one more. And this one would be archives. These are things I'm not. I'm not accessing very often and so this one I would do a good compression on and hit submit okay so uh, if you take a look at these shares they're all using the same disks you know but um, yes yeah, the size enforcement is disabled um, so Right now, I have a three terabyte drive for my photos. And so when that starts getting close to being filled up, I have to buy a four terabyte drive. At the same time, for my media, I have a three terabyte drive. And when that gets filled up, I'm gonna have to buy a four terabyte drive. But for a long time, there's gonna be about two terabytes that aren't being used because I'm not filling these hard drives up super quickly. I'm filling them up little by little. So instead of having to buy two four terabyte drives, I could instead perhaps upgrade my RAID little by little. And that's giving me just as much space as I need without having to upgrade, especially as 
the jump from four terabyte drives up to six and eight is way more expensive. So once I get to four, I'm gonna have a choice to make. Do I split my photo libraries? Do I split my media libraries? Because that creates a lot of extra complications when it comes to um, the DAM, which is the, um, shoot, I forgot exactly what it stands for, but it's basically about organizing my photos, right? So Lightroom or Digicam or whatever program you happen to use, once you start splitting across disks, it becomes more complicated to manage, more complicated for the metadata. And similarly with the media, you know, if you don't split it across TV shows are on this disk and movies are on this disk, then it becomes a lot harder to organize and just becomes more and more complicated to manage. So, um, yeah. Hmm. So I'd have to uh, experiment with this eventually the owner the group all these things what the best way to do it would be <laughs> and so and the other thing that one has to be careful with and um, when I explore this um, in the future I'll probably make a video or at least a blog post about it um, your your you have to be careful with Samba and the way you do your the way you do your shares because um, with the new ransomware that's happening where they encrypt everything you want to be really careful that you don't end up with uh, all your stuff getting encrypted because it was um, shared out to do a Windows computer um, so you might want to say read only for certain for certain um, shares um, Um, let's see oh this is for Apple and this is of course for Linux so um, go back to the dashboard here so here are the shares that we that I just created um, here's the pools the shares um, this is a very very nice piece of software and I it seems like uh, I'm definitely gonna wanna play with it um, let's see what appliances they have here so well that's good enough for now thank you very much for watching and I hope this was helpful for you um, if you want to um, consider rock store and you want to see how storage would work as you add hard drives of different sizes thanks again for watching i'll see you next time bye